The Great Exhibition ran from the 1st of May to the 15th of October 1851. To accompany our VR simulation of the exhibition, to be released free of charge in September 2024, we have created a five-part video series about the Great Exhibition of the Works of Industry of All Nations. The Great Exhibition opened Thursday the 1st of May 1851. Early in the morning, crowds of season ticket holders were already making their way to Hyde Park. Only season ticket holders were admitted on the opening day. In order to guarantee their place, some season ticket holders arrived at the Prince of Wales gate by 7 o'clock in the morning. At 9 o'clock the gates were opened, and 30,000 season ticket holders entered the building. The best vantage points for the opening ceremony were the gallery seats at the corners where the nave and transept cross, overlooking the dais just north of the Crystal Fountain. The Duke of Wellington, celebrating his 82nd birthday, arrived about 10 o'clock. The day had started bright and sunny, although it was interrupted by a brief shower shortly after 11 o'clock. The sun returned in time for the royal procession of nine carriages to leave Buckingham Palace, along Constitution Hill, then Rotten Row and on to the north entrance of the Crystal Palace. Trumpeters played a fanfare as the Queen and her party entered the building. They waited briefly in the retiring room, whilst a salute was fired by cannons located on the north side of the Serpentine. Then the Queen and her party walked south, through the Colbrickdale gates, opened for them by a beefeater, making their way to the dais, and greeted by cheers from the crowd. The national anthem was played by organists Mr Goss of St Paul's Cathedral and Mr Turl of Westminster Abbey, on the magnificent organ by Gray and Davison located on the gallery in the north transept. Following the national anthem, Prince Albert moved forward to give his opening address. The Queen replied, expressing her wish that the exhibition would help to promote friendly and honourable rivalry between nations. The Archbishop of Canterbury offered a prayer, followed by the choirs of St Paul's Cathedral, Chapel Royal, Westminster Abbey and St George's Windsor singing the Hallelujah Chorus, accompanied by the organ, this time played by Dr Elvie of St George's Chapel Windsor and Dr Wilde Professor at the Royal Academy of Music. The royal party then undertook a procession. Headed by Joseph Paxton and representatives of the building contractors, the exhibition committee and representatives of the various foreign states. They were followed by representatives of the Royal Commission, Her Majesty's Commissioners, foreign ambassadors and ministers, and then Her Majesty's Ministers. Next came the Archbishop of Canterbury and representatives of the royal household. Then came the royal family, starting with Queen Victoria, Prince Albert and their children, followed by other members of the royal household. The procession set out west along the north side of the western nave, round the model of Liverpool docks, underneath the Willis organ, which is now at Winchester Cathedral. Each organ was called into service as the royal party passed. The party then returned along the south side of the nave, crossing the transept into the eastern nave, passing the French organ by Du Croquet, then passing the magnificent statue of Amazon and Tiger, before rounding the bridge in the United States section, underneath the Gray and Davison organ which is now at St. Anne's Limehouse. The party then returned along the north side back to the dais in the transept. Once the party had returned to the dais, the Queen declared the exhibition open. Another trumpet fanfare was followed by another rendition of God Save the Queen, after which the Queen and her party departed. With the royal party gone, temporary crowd control barriers were removed, and the exploration of the great exhibition of the works of industry of all nations could begin. Look out for the next video in this series, where we look at the exhibition itself.